In 1948, in the Gobi Desert of Mongolia, a Soviet fossil hunting expedition uncovered three flat pieces of bone about a meter long. The paleontologist who described them thought they must have been the claws of some big species of turtle or turtle-like reptile that used them to forage for seaweed. So he gave the fossils a name that translates to turtle-shaped scythe lizard, aka Therizinosaurus colonoformis. But then, over 20 years later, the identity of these claws would change. A lot. Because they were actually the enormous hand claws of some kind of dinosaur. But with so little other material, exactly what type of dinosaur they belonged to was still a mystery. Over the next few decades, other bizarre fossils would be discovered in the same area. Paleontologists found hips, neck bones, and a skull that looked like they all came from plant eaters, along with more big claws and odd four-toed feet. It seemed like there was no way these fossils could have all come from a single group of dinosaurs. And if they did, where did they belong in the dino family tree? Figuring out the identity of these dinosaur mashups would take the discovery of more complete fossils in the 1980s and 1990s. But the mystery didn't end there because how the Therizinosaurus lived and evolved ended up being just as weird as their mixed-up anatomy. For decades, speculation reigned about where all these seemingly different fossil animals fit in the family tree of dinosaurs. Some researchers suggested that the strange remains from the Gobi came from theropods, the group that includes carnivorous dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus rex, maybe you've heard of it, and Allosaurus. Others went in a completely different direction, thinking that they might be late-surviving prosauropods, the ancestors of the long-necked giant plant eaters known as sauropods. Or maybe they were sauropods. And it even seemed possible that they were from another, previously unknown branch of the dinosaur family tree. The mystery continued until 1993, when a new dinosaur dated to between 125 and 113 million years ago was described from China. It was named Alchisaurus, and it had all of the strange features of those earlier fragmented finds combined in one animal, like slender jaws and a long neck. If the previously discovered fossils from the Gobi Desert were like the mixed up pieces of a jigsaw puzzle, then Alchisaurus gave paleontologists a look at the picture on the box. This new skeleton showed how the fossils found before, including Therizinosaurus, could actually be from different species of the same family of just extremely weird looking dinosaurs. And this group was unlike anything anyone could have imagined. These dinosaurs had the hips of a plant eater, long arms that ended in long claws like a giant ground sloth, and four-toed feet like prosauropods. If those features together weren't strange enough, they also had long necks and small heads that contained tiny, leaf-shaped teeth like a sauropod and beaks. And along with the discovery of Alchisaurus came another study that would change the shape of the dinosaur family tree by figuring out where these weirdos fit into it. It found that Therizinosaurus and its relatives were actually theropods after all. And later work would place them in the subgroup that also includes dromaeosaurs like Velociraptor, Deinonychus, and birds. But these theropods looked nothing like T. rex or any of their other known carnivorous relatives. Dromaeosaurs had more narrow hips and were more lightly built than Therizinosaurs, for example. They also walked on three-toed feet, had shorter necks, and had larger heads relative to their body size, with serrated, meat-cutting teeth. And while Dromaeosaurus also had long arms, they didn't have the big claws in their hands that got Therizinosaurus mistaken for a clawed turtle. So how and why did the Therizinosaurs end up looking so different from their cousins? Well, the answers to these two questions are actually linked together. These theropods look the way they do because they evolved into herbivores. And in 2005, an early relative of Therizinosaurus that was uncovered in Utah helped us understand how this happened. It's called Falcarius, and it dates back to at least 125 million years ago in the early Cretaceous period. It shows an in-between phase between the Therizinosaurs and their more carnivorous ancestors. Falcarius was much smaller than other Therizinosaurs, weighing around 100 kilograms. It had more narrow hips, some pointed teeth that could have helped it eat prey, and the standard curved hand claws of a theropod. But it also had some leaf-shaped teeth that point to it having a more omnivorous diet than a typical theropod, because this tooth shape is what we see in some plant-eating dinos. And Falcarius had a much longer neck than most theropods of its size, too. This let it reach around one and a half meters off the ground, which may have allowed it to browse on leaves. By the late Cretaceous, Therizinosaurus took these adaptations one step further. Their hips evolved to become wider and more robust, which made room for a bigger gut to digest plant material, a trait we see in many herbivores. Their hands began to have a greater range of motion, and their claws gradually became better adapted as grasping hooks for foraging, similar to the claws of extinct giant ground sloths. And their necks trended longer to browse on even higher foliage, while they also increased in overall body size. But how could a theropod evolve to eat plants in the first place? We've seen how their bodies changed over time, but what drove that change? 
Well, in 2009, a study proposed two possible scenarios for how this could have happened. One scenario pointed out that we already know of several groups of theropods that shifted from a more carnivorous diet to a more omnivorous one. These include the ornithomimosaurs and the oviraptorosaurs. So it's possible that this change in diet happened multiple times independently in different groups of theropods. The second scenario pointed out that these two groups and the therizinosaurs belong to a specific subgroup of theropods called Solurosauria, along with dedicated carnivores like T. rex. This subgroup is thought to share a common ancestor, which might have had a more omnivorous diet to start with. This would mean that the therizinosaurs went from omnivory to herbivory and were never carnivorous at all. And the thing that drove this group to herbivory? Well, Therizinosaurus and its ancestors probably adapted to eat plants to avoid competition with their carnivorous relatives. Falcarius shared an environment with a host of dromaeosaurs, troodontids, and early tyrannosaur relatives, so competitive pressure among carnivores was likely pretty high. And the specific adaptations of the Therizinosaurs, like long necks and claws, probably also helped them avoid competition with other herbivorous dinosaurs, like hadrosaurs and ceratopsians. Therizinosaurs that lived in the same place at the same time even became more specialized to avoid competition with each other. So amid all of this competition, the Therizinosaurs were pushed into their weird combination of features to carve out their own ecological niche. And in solving this fossil mystery, the big picture that the adaptations of Therizinosaurus and his relatives paint for us is ultimately a much more diverse picture of theropods. They're not all just variations of T-Rex. Not only that, but they're also pretty weird for herbivorous dinosaurs combining many of the traits we see in other groups of plant eaters into one unique family. From their initial mistaken identity as giant clawed turtles to the debates about how they evolved, the Therizinosaurs have been surprising paleontologists for decades. They've both shaken up our view of the dinosaur family tree and shown us how much of the fossil record we still have to explore. Thanks to this month's Clossum Eontologists. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm just getting used to it now. Like, there's just going to be a pun every week. Fine. Gail Brown, Juan M., Jaxi Weiss, Melanie Lamb Carnivale, Annie and Eric Higgins, John Datison Ng, Colton, Chase Archambault, and Jake Hart. Become an Eonite at patreon.com slash eons, and you can get fun perks like submitting a joke for me to read, like this one from The Virgins. How many dinosaurs does it take to screw in a light bulb? I'm not even going to look. I'm going to say 11. Aha, uh -huh, trick question. No dinosaur has paid his, paid his electric bill in over 65 million years. <laughs> then there's the question of like, is your electric bill, do they use fossil fuels? Riddle me this. <laughs> now the joker has become the jokey, or is it? Now the jokey has become the joker. And as always, thank you for joining me in the Adam Lowe studio. Subscribe at youtube.com slash eons for more evolutionary escapades. <laughs>